We've already determined that a good argument requires the careful consideration of both logic and ethics in order to be considered valid and persuasive. We've also taken a closer look at integrating logic into our critical thinking. Now it's time to talk a little more about ethics and how this concept can be applied to argumentative writing as well. So what exactly do we mean when we say ethics? According to the Random House Dictionary, we mean a system of moral principles. But this definition requires the further consideration of two questions. To whom does this system of moral principles belong to? And how are these principles set? The first question can have several answers. A system of moral principles can belong to an individual. Though many standards of ethics are shared among a particular society or culture, each of us is entitled to our very own set of morals. Remember how we learned that critical thinking requires us to become skeptics in order to come to a reasonable conclusion about a topic? The same idea can be applied here. Moral principles should be based on what you believe to be true after careful examination of both sides of an issue. Individual morals, or personal ethics, are set by you and should not be followed simply because someone else told you to do so. Though it's always good to consider advice from those who we believe to be wiser than us, it is important to base our final decisions on a variety of factors rather than blindly following someone else's idea of what's wrong and right. A system of moral principles can also belong to a society or culture. Typically, these principles are the focus of the laws of the society's government and determine the rights granted to each citizen. A similar set of principles might also apply to a region, a state, a town, a neighborhood, or even a family. Regardless, a society's set of moral principles, or social ethics, typically follow the given rule that one should do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Abiding by driving laws, like using your turn signal and going the speed limit, for example, are set in place with the goal of preventing as many car accidents as possible. Here's another example. Killing someone is against the law in our society because murder is generally considered by our population to be morally wrong. Finally, a system of moral principles can also belong to the entire world. For example, most people can agree that as human beings, we have a responsibility to take care of our planet. This includes everything from the Earth's air and water to its plants and animals. Again, in general, most people believe it is wrong to litter, destroy rainforests, and act inhumanely towards animals. This set of morals is known as conservation ethics. So how are these principles set? I think this week's reading says it best. Moral rules come from the collective experience of peoples and cultures in their search for stability, continuity, and harmony among persons of diverse interests, talents, and preferences. In other words, over the centuries, we have learned through experience what principles work best for the general population. Additionally, we learn from the wisdom of others, along with our own experiences. We can probably all remember doing something that is generally considered morally wrong and feeling guilty afterward. So how do we determine our own set of moral principles? I like this quote from Ernest Hemingway. About morals, I know only what is moral is what you feel good after and what is immoral is what you feel bad after. A note of caution though, remember to always be a skeptic. Just because a society deems a particular act as right or wrong doesn't always make it so. All we need do is think of World War II and how Hitler and his government treated the Jews. Additionally, remember that we are all human beings and we all make mistakes. Not too long ago, for instance, it was considered wrong for women to have positions in the world outside of raising children and working in the home. Our culture has since changed its mind on this issue, but other cultures still hold on to this belief. Question everything always. Now that we know a little bit more about ethics and how they are set, let's talk about how we can apply this idea to argumentative writing. 
When writing a persuasive text, it is important to consider the relationship you have with the audience, the subject, and the context in which it can be placed. This can be visualized as what is often referred to by scholars as the communication triangle. The reason these relationships are important is that when we write an argumentative paper, we don't typically just write it for fun. Usually, there is some kind of goal in mind, like convincing a mayor to consider repairing a pothole, persuading your boss to give you a raise, or preventing a tree from getting cut down. As we've discussed in previous lessons, it is crucial to know your audience in order to write an effective persuasive piece so that you can predict possible counterarguments, present appeals inclined to ethos, pathos, and logos, and be able to relate to the reader through empathy. The relationship between the writer and subject is also important to consider. Persuasive arguments on global warming could mean the difference between preventing our planet's destruction and total annihilation, for instance. As a writer, then, you have a responsibility toward your subject, which is why it is so important to conduct thorough research and get your facts right. The relationship between the audience and subject must also be evaluated. Thinking about how an audience already feels about your subject has to be considered before you can even begin to write. Perhaps they've been misinformed through media, for example, or have fallen prey to rumor or hearsay and need to be reminded of the actual evidence that exists on your topic. Finally, the relationship between all of these things, writer, subject, and audience, must be measured against the context of your subject. Even though a pothole may need fixing, it may be out of a mayor's control if the country is in the middle of a depression. Furthermore, it would be difficult to convince the rulers of a country to give equal rights to women whose religion teaches that women's place is in the home. Once we have established a relationship between each of these items, we open these up to ethical inquiries simply because all relationships require ethical responsibility. For instance, one could conclude that it would be unethical for a writer to completely disregard an audience's religious beliefs on a topic or how the topic might affect the well-being of our planet. Our next essay will be an argumentative essay over a current issue that exists in our society today. The last part of this lesson will show you how to complete your pre-writing for this essay, keeping what you've learned about ethics in mind. Your first step is to choose a topic. A list of example topics will be uploaded to the course content for you to get ideas. Keep in mind that this list is not exhaustive, nor are you required to pick one of the suggestions. These are just to get you thinking about a topic that you might be interested in. What I do care about is that your topic is current, something that can be and probably already has been debated. You're welcome to use the topic from the article that you analyzed in your first essay if you're anxious to do so. After you've decided on a topic, you'll want to determine your audience. Assume that your audience has only a basic understanding of your topic, one of the average American citizen. Next, you'll answer a set of questions presented by scholar Teresa Henning to get you thinking about how ethics work in our world. Using the principles that you come up with from these questions, you'll then complete what Henning refers to as the ethical question star to help you relate ethics to your particular topic. Here's an example of the structure of the ethical question star. Start with your topic in the center of the star. The overall goal of this assignment is to answer this question. What ethical values relate to my topic? As an example, we'll go back to everyone's favorite debate again legalizing marijuana. Since we are using this as an example, I would prefer that you don't use this topic for your essay. The branches of the star are focused on answering questions about the particular types of ethics related to your topic. Let's start with personal values. How does your topic relate to your own personal set of moral principles? A possible response might look like this. To me, legalizing marijuana would be acceptable morally because I believe that the benefits of the drug outweigh the risks. As the law stands now, however, marijuana is not legal in my area and therefore should not be used. Your answer might look different if your morals don't align with this idea. 
Perhaps you believe that in some cases it is necessary to break the law, such as when an illegal drug is the only option to keep a person alive. Or maybe your religion doesn't allow for the use of mind-altering drugs regardless if it is legal or not. The next branch of the star asks what environmental values relate to your topic. For our example, one might comment on how growing pot illegally has depleted important water sources and how pesticides have damaged the land. On the other hand, though, legalizing the plant might also come with higher standards for growing it and may also reduce carbon emissions from the vehicles and generators used by smugglers from Mexico. It's possible, too, that you are unfamiliar with marijuana's effects on the environment and need to do some research in this area first. The next branch asks what personal values your audience might have that can relate to your topic. You would need to consider your audience's religious beliefs, as mentioned before, the fact that some people consider weed to be a gateway drug, and other preconceived notions that your audience might have. The next branch of the star asks what rights and laws relate to your topic. Currently, marijuana is illegal in most states, but other states have it legal for medicinal use and even recreational use. Finally, the last branch of the star asks what issues of care and tolerance relate to your topic. By this, Henning means how your topic affects society as a whole, along with those you care about. Here you could write about how legalizing marijuana will help reduce the overpopulation of incarcerated persons due to nonviolent crimes, reduce pain and other symptoms produced by various medical issues, and increase economic gains throughout the country. As you can see, all of the answers listed in the star demonstrate ethical relationships that exist regarding your topic, and all of them will need to be considered when you draft your essay. This essay is worth 15% of your overall grade for this course and should consist of a minimum of 750 words, but no more than 900. You will need to incorporate at least three scholarly sources from the library or online databases into your essay and include a works cited page, all in proper MLA formatting. You will want to use the knowledge that you have gained thus far regarding the components that make a good argument when writing your essay. Be sure to include an introduction, a strong thesis statement, body paragraphs, and a crisp conclusion. Direct any other questions you may have to me by email or by using the whatever board, and as always, have a great week!